Hi, I'm Peter Delavadova from Next Level Tennis, and today I'd like to talk to you about the genuine common denominators of the top 10 players in the world, the top five women and the top five men, and really look closely at what they all have in common. So let's get into that. So when we talk about common denominators, over the years, in all the decades that I've been involved in tennis, one thing, or two things in particular, have really stood out. But let's go through what we all consider to be common denominators at the moment. Now, if I was to say those top 10 players, they all have the same grip. Is that a common denominator to be able to make the, the top five in the world? And the answer is no. As, as we know, the players all use different sort of grips. So we know that that's not a common denominator. The second thing is we've got styles of racket. We've got rackets, some with a, a wide beam, some with a thin beam, some are what we call hitters rackets. Is that something that the top players all use? That's not the case either. So we look at grips, we look at rackets. Okay, so maybe let's have a look at the stature of the people. Like everybody needs to be tall. Everybody has to be tall to make the top five, but that's not the case. We have athletic players, whether they're, whether they're shorter or whether they're taller, that is not something that is a guaranteed prerequisite of becoming a top player. So then we look at, okay, everybody has the same style backswing. Well, you could, you could talk about backswing and you could look on YouTube, you could study all the players, and the number of different styles. Some go back with their arm a little bent, some go back with their arm straighter, some come, come drop it down lower and some are a little bit lower at the start on the take back. The fact is, is that there are so many different backswings that you can't just say that the top five players all have the same backswing. And the same goes for the follow through. The follow through, there is a number of different follow throughs. Some come through and they'll straighten their arm up on the finish. Some will come through and their arm will be bent all the way through and others will straighten it up at impact. And they're all effective, they're all, they all work. So we can't as coaches say, hey listen, this way you have to do. So that's not a common denominator. So then we'd look at, okay, power. So everybody in the top five in the world all hit the ball super hard, but that's not the case. Some players do hit the ball incredibly hard, but then there are other players that their maximum speed is a lot lower. So then you go, well, it's not speed because there are real variations in that. So we go to spin. So, okay, there is a certain amount of spin that you need to hit to become top five in the world. Well, that's not the case. You could go through good examples in the men's game of Nadal with the spin rate and say Medvedev, who has been able to make top five, but hits the ball much flatter. So you can't say that it is amount of spin that you need to be able to have. So how about movement patterns? Okay, now one thing for sure is that all the top players are great movers and they're all fast. So that is something that is there for us to look at but do they all move the same and the answer is no so there is not a set movement pattern that you could say to a player do this and it's a guarantee because there's not there's a lot of different ways of being fast there's a lot of different ways of being able to get to the ball so we look at power we look at spin all these things here are things that yes players have but not guaranteed the same way so what are the common denominators, genuine ones that the top five men and women all have? And in all the years I've been involved, two things have always stood out to me. And I would love to talk to you about those two things. I believe that they've been there ever since I've been involved in tennis. Now I would like you guys to have a think about this and let us know in the comments below and see if you guys can think about two areas that right through the years that the top players all have in common. It'd be well worth reading. So I hope you guys paused the video and commented what you think and we'd be very interested here at Next Level to know your thoughts. Now, what I believe, two th factors that come into play when you are looking at the elite player. One, I have never seen anybody make the top five in the world without 
despite having a very high tennis IQ. Now, what do we mean by tennis IQ? And that is the ability to understand your own game and understand the strengths and weaknesses and have the ability to be able to read your opponent's strengths and weaknesses. It's not about intelligence. It is about the ability to work opponents out. There has never been a player that has made the top five that doesn't have a high tennis IQ. There are ways of improving that and that's what we can get into, but certainly that is one of the things, one of the genuine common denominators that we need to have so that you've got a chance. You need high tennis IQ. The second area that has always enthralled me every time I go to a, a, the Australian Open or to a major or to a big event and I get the chance to watch the best players in the world practice or play a match, the first thing that hits me is not their strokes, it is the sound of the ball coming off the strings. They hit the ball clean. It is a clean sound. Now even when they miss, it sounds like it's a good strike. It's a really good contact. Now that is something that we have to strive for. There's so much going on from a technical point of view these days that sometimes we lose the fact that all top players have the ability to center the ball. And even when they miss it, they don't lose confidence because when you hit the ball and you hit the ball off center, that will take away your confidence faster than anything. So when a top player misses the ball, it still feels good off their strings, they move on and it doesn't hurt their confidence. So they are the two areas, tennis IQ, which needs to be worked on, and your ability to hit the ball clean and often. That means that they can hit it and it's consistently clean off the strings, not just the occasional one. That's the biggest difference between the top five and the rest of the players. So I hope you really enjoyed this video and it all started to make some sense to you. So just remember, put in the comments below if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe for more videos. We'll see you in the next one.